My name is Marta, and in this Red Gamer Tech video, I am here with yet another collection for you. We have a couple of items on our itinerary today, and the first of which is from AMD, who made an appearance at IBC in Amsterdam this year. Now, while they were there, they did a couple of things, but the most interesting thing that they did is announce eGPU support for mobile workstations. But before I get to that, I just want to very quickly discuss the SSGs, the Radeon Pro SSGs, which of course we first saw at SIGGRAPH. And before we move on to our main thing for AMD, they did announce the WX2100 and WX3100. And now we, while we only do have tests performed at AMD's labs, they are showing so far some pretty damn impressive performance for entry-level professional graphics card currently available on the market. Now, again, these are the Radeon Pros, so you know, not intended for you, and our, you or I at all. But it's still interesting nonetheless, thought it was at least worth mentioning. However, as I said, the main string to AMD's bow in this particular video is AMD is leveraging something called AMD X Connect, which basically gives you eGPU compatibility for Radeon Pro WX series graphics cards. So the English version of what I just said, as that sounded like a lot of gibberish, is that it's essentially external GPU support, so you can use desktop graphics cards on mobile devices such as laptops. Now for those of you wondering, um, there are various GPUs supported with Xconnect, not just the ones I just mentioned, the WX series. So far, we've got the 500 series, 400 series, Fury, Nano, 300 series, the 290X, the 290, and the 285 compatible with XConnect. So basically, this is just them bringing that support to the Pro WX series of graphics cards, essentially meaning that you could have a pretty damn powerful mobile workstation with the use of this XConnect technology. Next up is a bit of bad news, unfortunately, as according to IC Insights, DRAM prices are going to continue to increase, even though they have increased by more than double over the last 12 months. And exactly what are they predicting? Well, by the end of the calendar year, the DRAM's price per bits would have jumped 40% or possibly even more. Now this is again after they've already increased 111% over the last 12 months. Now this doesn't just increase well RAM prices, that's you know the obvious knock-on effect that we're going to have from this, but the less obvious thing is that RAM is of course a component in say well GPUs and pretty much everything else. Now obviously that doesn't mean graphics cards are going to increase in price 40%, that's crazy. But it does mean that, obviously, if the RAM to build the GPU is more expensive, then obviously the GPU itself is going to have to increase in price as well. So, you know, while it will impact just, you know, a straight-up stick of RAM, and obviously several sticks is obviously going to be an issue, we are going to see knock-on effects for GPUs, and obviously it will even reach so far as smartphones and that sort of thing. Now we do actually have a bit of an insight here, lol, pun, I, that wasn't actually intentional but I'll take it. Um, basically, you might recall that last year there was actually an oversupply that brought low prices for RAM, I know how much we are thinking wistfully of those times, but apparently according to IC Insights that oversupply was actually one of the contributors to the price hike that we are now seeing. Basically wholesalers took the chance to grab all the stock during the oversupply and then obviously the shortage has deepened and now wholesalers are kind of cashing in on those increased prices. Now obviously we've got several large players in the RAM game as it were and unfortunately you know we're not really seeing much of a response or an indication of response at least according to IC Insights to this. Um, for example Micron are not going to be increasing production capability capacity according to, again to IC Insights. Instead they're going to be relying on things like improvements in yields and shrinking down to smaller nodes to boost that output of DRAM. So you know they're not just sitting on their hands and going la 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 it's all fine. They're just not making more. They're just, just trying to increase their yields and boost their output in other ways. Well, SK Hynix are actually saying that they do want to boost their DRAM output but unfortunately there's no sort of set timeline in, in play at the minute. So we don't actually know when this is going to happen. And unfortunately, Samsung, the other big player, aren't really saying much of anything. They tend to play their cards very close to their chest when it comes to this sort of thing. So we just don't know what they're doing, unfortunately. So basically, you know, Micron are 
trying to increase yields, but to ease this, SK Hynix are flat out making more, and who knows what Samsung are doing. But uh, even with, say, SK Hynix, you know, at flat out just increasing the amount that they're making, it's going to be a while before this actually trickles down to the consumer level, unfortunately. So uh, if you're planning on making a new build and you need some new RAM, perhaps, you know, you're upgrading to a Ryzen build or something like that that needs DDR4, I suggest you buy it soon before this price increase starts. You know, I'm not trying to start some sort of, like, you know, screaming panic here. That's a bit silly. I mean, obviously, this is a prediction. It could not happen. Or it could. I'm just saying if you do have plans to get a build going, perhaps just buy the RAM first is all I'm saying. So, thank you very much for watching guys. I'll see you next time.